everyone to another thrilling episode of Chester Graham's Mausoleum. <laughs> I am Chester Graham, naturally, and this is, naturally, my mausoleum. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to have you visiting with us today. Run, people! Run while you still have legs! These crazy bastards will chop off your head and stick it in a fish tank! And that, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the program, is my good friend, Mr. Wormser. <laughs> uh, here's a picture of him from happier times. <laughs> uh, and this is Mr. Wormser now. Uh, can you get a shot of him, Terrence? Yeah, Terrence. Get a, get a, shot, shot, of of get a get shot of him. Get a shot of the, of the freak, freak in the, the jaw. jaw. Oh, Mr. Wormser. Even the most arcane medical experimentation can't take the fight out of you. <laughs> and that's why we love you so much. Love my non-existent ASU abominable, abominable treatment. Why, why couldn't you have just let me stay, stay dead? dead? I was in peace. peace. I was I in heaven. heaven. Um, but weren't you an Orthodox Jew before you gave up religion, Mr. Wormser? <laughs> you always told me you never believed in heaven. Yeah, you, yeah, don't, you believe don't believe in Bigfoot, Bigfoot either, either. till he, till he runs, runs up behind you in the woods, woods and makes, makes you into his love doll. doll. Don't oh, argue semantics with me, me Grim. I was I'm in heaven, heaven sharing quality time, time with my friend, the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Then you, you had to go and turn me into a monstrosity straight out of a Russian scientist nightmare. I'll never forgive you. Well, I only thought we were doing the best for you, Mr. Worms. Perhaps I was wrong. But perhaps, just perhaps, I can make things right. Uh, and Omar, Omar, old friend, <laughs> uh, 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 would you do me a favor and throw a sheet over Mr. Wormser's cubicle? Let him get some rest. Uh, as for myself, uh, I've got some thinking to do. <laughs> cubicle? This isn't an office room, it's a living hell! And don't you dare cover me up, you friggin' hunchback! I'm not a parakeet! Gee, that sheet, sheet is filthy. filthy. Looks, Looks like, like Mothra's maxi pad. You keep, you keep it away. away. Omar, I'm warning you. You, you, you stay back. Stay back, you, you crippled bastard. And uh, Omar, while you're there, uh, please unplug his speakers as well, would you? Uh, I need a little um, quiet time to figure things out. <laughs> um, allow me a few moments to collect myself, folks. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. <laughs> It's a what? It's a pizza looking taco tasting pizza. A pizza looking taco tasting pizza. A pizza looking taco tasting pizza. New taco pizza at Pizza Hut. Could you say that again? It's a pizza looking taco tasting pizza. A pizza looking taco tasting pizza. A pizza looking taco tasting pizza. New taco pizza at Pizza Hut. No, wait, wait, wait. Run that by me again. It's a pizza looking taco tasting pizza. New taco pizza at Pizza Hut. We're coming in for taco. Alright. We're coming in for God. And welcome back, folks. <laughs> and you know, uh, Mr. Wubbs' words about heaven made me curious. He was a confirmed atheist until his recent uh, and near-death experience. <laughs> I hoped I would find some answers in the good book. <laughs> and this one has been in my family for generations. <laughs> Yes, Omar, you are correct, sir. A <laughs> legend has it this very Bible was used in a great number of ritualistic cleansings, exorcisms, and demon banishings. <laughs> this was quite a little holy warrior. <laughs> yes, Omar, yes. <laughs> you know, perhaps the scientific approach wasn't a way to go. And, you know, we have a little film uh, kicking around in the uh, archives of the mausoleum. Uh, I was going to show a perfectly gruesome little tale about uh, cannibalistic necrophiliacs. <laughs> mm. uh, but maybe something a little more angelic is the path we should take. Folks, please enjoy this one. It's called The Door to Heaven. <laughs> are an essential 
part of our lives, even more so than most of us realize. Doors enable us to enter our homes, our schools, our churches, and our places of business. Without doors, we would be locked out of many comforts and joys of life. The ease and comfort of home, opportunities for worship in church, opportunities for work in the office. There are many kinds of doors, but all doors cannot be seen. There is a door to knowledge that we call study. There is another door we cannot see, one which is just as real. It is the door to heaven. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. There is only one door to heaven. People would have us believe there are many doors to heaven. Some say the door to heaven is good works. Some say the door to heaven is good character. Others say the door to heaven is church membership. And then there are those who insist that self-righteousness is the door to heaven. Many are indifferent to the life beyond and pay no attention to heaven's door. Some procrastinate, meaning to enter heaven's door sometime, but they cannot be concerned with it now. None of us would build a home with special doors for each member of the family. We all use the same doors. And of course, we know that the door which is large enough for the biggest one of the family is large enough for the smallest too. So it is with heaven's door. It is large enough to permit the biggest as well as the smallest sinner to enter, if he but come, seeking admittance in the name of Jesus. Some doors can be entered only after a specified entrance fee is paid. Heaven's door is open to all, without money and without price. But just because we pay nothing to enter, does not mean that no price was paid. Not silver and gold, nor precious stones, but his own precious blood. Heaven's door is open at all times, night and day. Doors enable us to seek shelter from the storms of life. And so, the door to heaven enables us to find shelter from the storm of God's wrath. But those who remain outside the door are already under the wrath of God and must suffer the full force of the storm when it breaks. Which side of the door are you on? No one can enter heaven with a heart of unbelief. Only a heart that believes on the Lord Jesus will have entrance there. Men cannot take their riches with them. At heaven's door, we part with all earthly gain. There is only one thing we can take with us through that door, those whom we have led to the Savior. What a joy it would be to take into the Savior's presence many whom we have won to him. Now, during the day of grace, the door of heaven is open wide, and the Savior's invitation to all is, Come, enter in. Will you not answer that call? Will you not accept the Lord Jesus today, and thereby become one of those who can enter heaven's door? Do not delay, my friend, for someday that door will close by God himself, and no power on earth will be able to open it. Then you will seek in vain to enter. Then you will have only vain regrets because you did not enter while you could. But praise be to God for his mercy toward the children of men. Heaven's door is still wide open. Won't you enter while you may? Won't you heed the words of the Lord Jesus when he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Won't you accept him as your savior and there take your place among those who will someday pass through heaven's door into the beautiful city of gold? Whee!
Well, hello there, and welcome back. <laughs> Wasn't that interesting? <laughs> Who knew there was only one way to get into heaven? <laughs> it really does seem like knowing your Bible is the key. <laughs> if only I could find a way to use mine to make Mr. Worms' new life a little more, well, tolerable. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> It, it, it appears as if something supernatural is afoot. Oh, no! No, it can't be! But it must be! Legion! <laughs> the all-powerful and, and all-knowing and omnipotent uh, amalgamation of at least three holiday seasons! <laughs> Bacon, bacon. Why? Why, you're not Legion. And where's my Bible? Oh, well, you silly goose, you. Not only am I your Bible, I'm the Bible. <gasps> and I can hear your prayer. Ooh, I, I don't recall praying, although it did cross my mind. <laughs> of course it did. Everybody prays there now and again. <laughs> Most of the time, it's because you're scared and alone. Often it's when you're at rock bottom, mm -hmm. trying to decide between uh, slashing your wrist, uh, drinking bleach, or screaming insensitive racial epithets at a flow ride of concert. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> and sometimes, just sometimes, you pray silently in your mind, deep in the back of your mind, because you don't know what else to do. <laughs> it's a subconscious thing. Like uh, like dressing in women's panties and dancing around in the parking lot of a hot topic at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's why I'm here. Um, my good man, I have never been to a hot topic in my entire life. No, no, not that one. You want to bring your friend back. And he was touched by the Almighty as a very special Bible. I have the ability to see things like that. You mean to tell me you can finally bring Mr. Wormser back to his original form? <laughs> you can make him whole again? <laughs> Not only can I make him whole, Ooh. I can make him better. Ooh. He's one of the favorite sons now. Mm. Didn't you hear me tell you he was touched by the Almighty? <laughs> yes, I did, I did. Then let's get busy with divine intervention. Ooh. We shall rebuild him. Ooh. We will make him bigger, stronger. Faster! Whoa! <laughs> like the six million dollar man! <laughs> what? what? Who's that? <laughs> the six million dollar man? It, it was a television show in the 70s. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Chester, but my pop culture references only go back to about 1984. <laughs> I'm kind of like Seth MacFarlane, except he's taller than me and is all about the money. <laughs> <laughs> and if you read me, you'll know that's a sin. <laughs> Well said. Well, it, it appears that, that you might be the literal answer to my prayers then. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, the Bible. You are to be commended. You got that right, Captain Jack. <laughs> why, why don't we take a little break and then proceed to bringing your pal back alive? <laughs> We shall return after these messages, folks. A and don't you dare touch that dial. This is literally an episode of Biblical Proportions. <laughs> Mr. Wormser's head onto the skeleton's body? 
<laughs> Should I wear gloves? <laughs> oh, no, no. This won't be a surgical procedure. It'll be a spiritual procedure. Are you ready? Oh, I am. Oh, truly I am the Bible. <laughs> what can I do to help? You can help by believing, Chester. Just believe. That's all you need. Just believe and have faith. Faith in the Bible. Wars have been fought in the name of faith. Lives have been lost. But in the end, all that matters is belief, faith, and love. And if you believe and have faith in me, then I'll love you forever. Oh, oh <laughs> that's quite comforting. Oh, truly it is. <laughs> but the show is almost over. So can uh, we please get on with it? You're the boss, Chester. Well, you're like the third boss. The first boss is God. The second is Jesus. Actually, you might be like the 15th or 16th boss. Ooh, well, let's do this thing. Woo! All right, Atlanta. All Is that Latin? I, I seem to sense some sort of supernatural power. All of this. I thought you were here to help me. Ha ha ha! I am not the Bible, Chester Grimm. I am the Necronomicon, the diary of evil and contempt. My appearance as the Bible was a simple masquerade, formulated to confuse you and make your suffering intolerable. Why? Why, that's just plain rude and totally unprofessional. <laughs> You and the simpletons who call your friends have done nothing more than invoke the wrath of the damned. And the wrath of the damned shall be your end. Oh my goodness. I feel it's time to go to break, but I fear there won't be one in our future. Oh yes, Omar. Get thee ready. The final battle is at hand. <laughs> Your resistance is futile. Surrender yourselves now and die with dignity. Now hang on there. You told me that if I believed in you, had faith in you, and loved you, everything would work out in the end. Do not use my words against me. I am the Necronomicon. Do you expect me to fall prey to such simple terms? <laughs> Hush now, little dark book. <laughs> I know you want to kill us all, <laughs> but whether you like it or not, I had faith in you. I believed that you would help me bring Mr. Wormser back, and for all that you've done, I love you. <laughs> this is inconceivable. I am the Necronomicon. I have no equal! <laughs> yes, yes. Omar says, uh, uh, shut the f up. <laughs> oh, Nerim! Nerim! You don't see that every day, do you? 
As a wise man once said, we tampered in God's domain. <laughs> and so it goes. Oh, sweet Jeebus. I feel like my brain's been fed to a ninja. And I don't mean the kind of ninja you can buy on an infomercial. <laughs> Mr. Wormser! Oh, is that you? Is that really you? <laughs> hey, Chessie! How's it hanging? What's been going on? Why am I on the floor? Uh, oh my goodness! Um, for some reason, the distillation of warped magic seems to have brought you back into the land of the living um, with some uh, side effects. Side effects? Did I hit the Aunt Hannah's absinthe again? <laughs> um, uh, no, chum, uh, but uh, Things have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. This is horrible. Uh, we'll be right back. Yeah. Underoos look out of sight. Superman! All of us were all good guys. The Hulk! You can pick your favorite if you try. Yes, you can! Underwear is fun to wear. It's true when it's you and your underoos. Now there's the Lone Ranger. And Tonto, too. And the photo on your underoos. Lone Ranger and Tonto. And then after the Bible turned evil, I gave him a much needed hug. <laughs> a hug? Yes, and then, for whatever reason, he turned back into a book. <laughs> I gave it to Omar to lock away in the root cellar. <laughs> and you think it's safe? Oh, yes, for now. As long as Tiny Marvin doesn't find it down there. <laughs> Who's Tiny Marvin? <laughs> That's not important. The important thing is you're back, and we fought death. We fought the Necronomicon and won! <laughs> And you're back here with us, and I'm so proud to call you my friend. Uh, yippee. Uh, and to think, none of this may have happened had I not brought that cursed book into the picture. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, that's all for tonight. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. You brought the book? You must have left that part out. Well, yes. I was under the assumption it was my family Bible. But it had turned out I had loaned that to Chantilly some time ago. The evil Bible must have been the one I picked up at the Miskatonic flea market some time ago. <laughs> well, that's just perfect. Yeah. You, you can't even tell a, an old family heirloom from a demon-possessed forgery. <laughs> I will admit, before it transformed, I did find some comfort in its pages. Yes. <laughs> the Psalms. John 316. <laughs> Even that stuff from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> well, that's nice, Grim. <laughs> that's real nice. Because of you, I come back from the second dead looking like a shitty piece of Jeff Dunham fan art. <laughs> you sit there, you thump your Bible, and you say your prayers, and it didn't get you anywhere. Well, talk about Psalms, talk about your John 316. I... Worms of 316 says, I'm gonna whip your ass. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I'll admit this is going to take some getting used to, but uh, I have to admit it does feel good to be more mobile. <laughs> ah, well, thanks for tuning in to Chester Grimm's Mausoleum. Make sure that you uh, like the show on Facebook, join us on Twitter, and join us again next time. That's the bottom line, because Mr. Wormser says so. <laughs>